Hello and welcome to a new Stumpy series on the channel. This is the first series on this channel, so welcome if you are new. You probably are because it's the first video, but first series on the channel, welcome to Stumpy Squared. This right here is going to be a Madden simulation reboot as we follow along the entire head coaching career of whoever we end up creating. We're starting with the Cowboys here as the starting team, but essentially how this series will go is we're going to sim the first three seasons of the simulation. Then at the end of those three seasons, whatever the worst team is, we're going to create a new coach and take over that team as their new head coach. We're going to be the head coach of that team for at the most 10 seasons. The goal is to win a Super Bowl. If you win a Super Bowl within those first 10 years, then we will move on to a different team as soon as we win the Lombardi Trophy. If we fail to win the Super Bowl or we don't win it until year 10, then regardless of what happens after 10 years with the same team, we are going to be moving on to the worst team at the end of that 10th season. If we win the Lombardi Trophy before the 10th season, then we take over the worst team at the end of that year. And that's how we move forward. We're going to go until the entire save cannot be sent forward. So about 30 or 35-ish seasons, not sure how long the game will let us go, but that is the intent with this series. Each episode will be a full off season and a full season, unless we get to the Super Bowl, in which case we're going to watch each appearance in that game. But outside of the Super Bowl, we are going to be exclusively keeping each episode to a single off season plus the following season after that. So that is the game plan for the series. And uh, that's how we're going to move forward. The only settings that I would change once you sim the first three years are to just go into your league settings, which I showed at the start of the video and to just change all of the league advancement stuff back to manual instead of being on automatic. Uh, I had it on auto just so that the Cowboys would not have a horrible three years because I wasn't managing them. So make sure that you switch that back to manual once you sim through the first three years if you want to follow along. But we're starting in the preseason of 2023, not from the current week in real life. So we're going to sim through these next three years and see who is the worst team at the end of those three seasons. So let's jump right in. We sim through three full years and we enter in the playoffs of that third season. This is usually when teams are firing coordinators and head coaches and hiring new ones. So the Cowboys are 13 and four. They're probably going to be the one seed in the NFC, which is the case. It looks like. But let's find out who we're going to be taking over. Who is the worst team in the league this season? Sort by rank. It is the Detroit Lions. So Dan Campbell's tenure is going to be cut short here. And it uh, looks like things have maybe only gotten worse for them since his first couple of seasons in Detroit. I can't make a new character without making Mike McCarthy retire, so we're going to sim through the playoffs first um, to get to the Super Bowl and see where things are at after that. So let's uh, see what happens here in the playoffs. It's going to be a giant Steelers Super Bowl, and it looks like here in the playoffs, the Cowboys fell on their first game against the Giants by three. So that is how Mike McCarthy's career is going to end with the Cowboys, we'll look over the yearly recap for the previous two years once we get to that point. But for now, we are going to retire. Make a new character. Mike McCarthy's career is over. So new head coach, Jason Ferguson, will take over for the Lions. Former tight end of the New York Jets put alongside head coach Damian Leak as well, who was uh, the quarterback back then. So, Jason Ferguson takes over. He's the new head coach. And a league settings, I want to put all this stuff back to manual. And I'm going to put the auto progression stuff to off as well. 
Lamar Jackson wins MVP this year, while Doug Peterson wins Coach of the Year just over Mike McCarthy. Over in the AFC, Offensive Player of the Year is Lamar. Miles Garrett, Deep Boy, Malcolm Washington, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Lionel Ford, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Joe Burrow, Best Quarterback. Taylor, Best Running Back. Miles Garrett wins Best Defensive Line. Matt Gay, best kicker. Blankenship wins that in the NFC. CD Lamb wins Offensive Player of the Year. Micah Parsons, Depoy. Offensive Rookie of the Year is David Langley. Terrence Terry, D. Roy. Prescott wins Best Quarterback. Barkley, best quarter or best running back. Receiver goes to Lamb. Zach Martin, best offensive lineman. Micah Parsons, best D line. Ryan Burns, best linebacker. Best defensive back goes to Jair Alexander. And we saw Blankenship win that one. So those are your yearly awards. And uh, we've got Jordan Love at quarterback, it looks like. We'll look through those stats here in a moment. The Giants have won the Super Bowl as we enter staff week. They win 31 to 10. So they are the champions, their fifth time winning it. What happened in the previous two years? Back in 2023, the Colts took down the Panthers by three to win it with Shaq Leonard winning Super Bowl MVP. That is ironic. Um, yearly awards. Joe Burrow won an MVP that year. Micah Parsons had Defensive Player of the Year. Bryant Dable had Coach of the Year for New York. In 2024, the Cowboys won it with Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott taking down Lamar Jackson and the Ravens 35-21. Their sixth Super Bowl title. Zach Taylor had coach of the year. Mahomes was the MVP. Travis Kelsey was the offensive player of the year. And then Marcus Lawrence had Depoy that season as well. And now we're in 2025. So we're all caught up on the awards and everything. Let's check our team stats and see if we should keep around these coordinators. Look at our team ranks. We are 29th in offensive points per game. 16th in passing yards per game, 23rd in rushing, 15th in defensive points per game, middle of the pack in passing yards, and pretty terrible in run defense. So it seems a lot of things to figure out. And in terms of staff moves, what has the rest of the league done? Looks like Todd Bowles was fired over in Tampa alongside both of his coordinators. Brandon Staley was fired finally. The Broncos fired their offensive coordinator. The Chargers cleaned house pretty much. Uh, the Colts fired their OC. Uh, Dan Campbell was obviously fired. So it looks like Pratt was just his replacement. Um, the Lions also fired their OC and DC. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to let go the current staff that we have. Because I kind of want to bring in my own people so we're going to just let these guys go. I'm not even going to consider these guys as a part of the roster or of the staff. So consider that these two spots have been open the entire time. In terms of players, Jordan Love started for most of the year. Looks like Hen and Hooker got a couple of games to play. Uh, but Love appeared in every game this year. Uh, less than 3,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, 11 INTs. Really low amount of yards per game. Rating is not bad but it's not great either ypa is okay but i mean completion percentage is pretty high maybe just going to a really shorter passing game and that's why it was as low as it was jameer gibbs 3.3 per carry this year two touchdowns only montgomery 3.5 a carry with 10 touchdowns but neither guy was really doing anything all that impressive They're trying to figure out the running game still Receiving wise, Amon Ross St. Brown was good, but just not as good as you would like him to be. But that's probably a, a result of the quarterback production. Want to get Mike Williams, who is now over here in Detroit, more involved. We still got Jamison Williams and Sam Laporta. Ross's offensive line. What's it looking like? Pretty good offensive line. You got Taylor Decker and Penny Sewell. Ragnow still here. You got John Runyon, Emmett Price. Really a low amount of sacks allowed this year, but curiously enough, the run game just wasn't up to snuff. What about defense? A lot of tackles here from Jack Campbell. 
13 tackles per loss for Hutchinson. And he led the team in sacks as well with only nine. So you definitely want to beef up the pass rush. Maybe add a couple more players here. And INTs, he got four for CJ GJ. With uh, that many, Brian Branch had three. We'll take a look at the offense and the defense. Both had a pretty good kicker this year with Cooper Whitaker. I guess he was drafted the last couple of years. So why would you keep Badgley on the roster then? You have a kicker that's this this good. Those were the stats. What about the actual roster of the team now? Got Hooker and Love. Love's down to like a 71 with morale, making that a bit worse. Hooker has the QB of the future tag, but I'm not sure about that. He is 28 years old. Older than Jordan Love is already. He was drafted three years later. Running back, you got Gibbs, Montgomery, uh, Jalen Boyle, and a couple of backups from the practice squad. You got Gabe Neighbors, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Mike Williams, Jamison Williams, Artie Beasley, Irv Smith, Sam Laporta, Boston Moreau. Taylor Decker and Aaron Cobb left tackle. Might just want to get rid of Decker and let Cobb play to improve because if you can start this guy in a year or two, he could be like an 80 overall or right around where Decker is at. Also got a young left guard in uh, Emmett Price, so at least that's a promising sign. Replacing some of the aging veterans. He got center Frank Ragnow, John Runyon, Penny Sewell, Aiden Hutchinson, Alongside Dayo Adanyingbo, Demarcus Whitehead, defensive tackle Lee McNeil. Yeah, this defensive line is terrible. Besides Hutchinson, it is really bad. So we got to beef this up and fix the run defense. I mean, this is why the run defense has been so bad, is because we don't have a good defensive tackle on the roster. So I got to fix that. Probably going to need to upgrade here at left outside linebacker. Could use additional pieces at middle linebacker alongside Jack Campbell. And could definitely use an upgrade over the 35-year-old Khalil Mack. So the pass rush needs improvements. Run defense needs improvements. Uh, the secondary, at least the corners, look to be really, really bad. Got to be one of the worst secondaries in the entire league. Got Kirby Joseph was a solid free safety. You got CJ Gardner Johnson here as well. Why would I not, not, not just play one of these guys at free safety? You got Brian Branch here. I'm just going to move him to free safety or something because. Yeah, I'm just going to play him at free safety next year because you can already do that. Probably can just trade away Kirby Joseph. So we're going to add him to the trade block just immediately. Got to wait for that until the next episode. But. We're seeing that the secondary needs work. The defense really needs a lot of work. I mean, both sides of the ball really do. Um, probably looking for a quarterback upgrade. We're gonna hire a new. Um, gonna hire a new coordinator here for both sides here soon. I'm just gonna cut Michael Badgley here. Um, we got Jack Fox, but that's your roster. And you know the offensive line, you know, is not bad at all. So room to work with there but you're looking for probably a major quarterback change maybe maybe a running back change but probably not probably some additional o-line adjustments uh defensive line and linebacker additions and addition to, to the secondary as well so pretty much trying to revamp the entire defense and plug in the holes on the offense Look at team schemes right now we're doing the west coast spread which i don't mind i'm down to use this going forward, but just curious as to what scheme fit matches the current roster the best. Looks like it is the spread slash the West Coast spread, so we can stick with this for now. For defense, it's like 75 is the highest, or no, 79 here with the base 3-4, which is the play that we're running, so I think... I'm fine to keep the defense here in a 3-4, but I might want to change the playbook up to a different one. Let's just do the New England one, multiple 3-4 playbook. Um, then for the offense, this is the vertical passing scheme. 
attack in the middle of the field a lot of the time. The West Coast spread, you know, looks for... I guess short passing mostly, so... Let's switch this up to just the spread then. Instead of the West Coast spread, we can change the playbook up to something different. Uh, maybe looking for... A playbook that attacks... Intermediates and deep. Like here with the... Rivera playbook, constant misdirection, passing deep frequently to keep defenses honest. Why not try this out for size? The base on that will try and find a coordinator that lines up with those changes. So let's fill out our staff and hire a new OC. Here's one. You got Roger Hughes. He's got the vertical power run offensive scheme, but he does like the Rivera playbook. He's already got a couple of talents. Let's view this tree. He's got open field moves, which will help for the passing game for running backs out of the backfield. So good for Jameer Gibbs for sure. Pass blocking for tight ends. And then um, X factors for, uh, for the offensive lineup. Okay, so interesting. I guess there is also Ron Rivera who is here, but I'm looking at OC specifically. And I still want to do have a more vertical passing game, so that also checks out with the power running as well. I think we're going to hire Roger Hughes. Now for a defense, we're looking for the New England playbook slash multiple 3-4 or base 3-4, either one. All right, yeah, I still can't find anybody that has the New England defensive playbook, so... We'll just hire the top talent guy in terms of defensive coordinators that matches our scheme, which is base 3-4, and has plenty of talent. So let's find that guy. The only base 3-4 guy is Kevin Bell, but he has plenty of talents. So we're going to bring Kevin Bell back. So Bell was the initial candidate for DC. And he does get the job. We have plenty of staff points now. I want to save those until we enter our next season. If I had the coordinators and now we can just move into the off season and the re-signing period, see who was not kept around or anything on the roster. And then we will go through what the prospects look like. And then we'll wrap up here in the opening episode. We've got five players that are ready to hit the open market, and it looks like some of them are actually pretty key players. First, we're going to accept the option here for Gibbs, despite the rough year. Um, he's still a player that can really improve and is only 24 years old, so a lot of up upside still with him. Jamison Williams wants to hit, and we did not give him a new contract, and he does not have any interest in coming back. So what has he done in his first couple of years here? Not a whole lot. In fact, it's only gone down as the years have gone on in terms of average per game. So um, we'll see about him, but we're going to let him go. We're going to accept the option for Jack Campbell, obviously, as our main uh, tackler. Montgomery, we're going to let walk. Ponte Maddox, I feel comfortable. The rest of these guys, I think we can just let go and just kind of do a full reset here in the rebuild. In terms of the mock draft, though, we do have the first overall pick and they have us selecting a wide receiver, Keon Caldwell. Top five projection. We only have him 50% scouted, but he looks to be a fantastic athlete. A spec catch, short route, catching, B release, A to C stamina, medium route, kick return, juke move, ball carrier vision, break tackle awareness, and deep route, a C catch in traffic. It's going to have a fairly low injury, but this guy could be an absolute star receiver to add alongside Amon Ra St. Brown to help out whoever is going to be our quarterback next season. So that could be a definite option, but I'm also curious about the quarterback options here because we could probably use a reset there as well. You got Eric Baldwin here, 
really good accuracies across the board. 6'5 out of Ole Miss, 21 years old, improviser. Three quarter and quick throwing motion. Fantastic athlete with good to great throw power. He can run the ball outside of the pockets. Has low injury amounts, but this guy can move and he can throw. So he's a round one to two talent, top five projection. And we did go for quarterbacks in scouting, thank God. So these first three quarterbacks are all round one or two talents, so not necessarily first overall worthy, but I mean, you probably have to take one of them at one if you can, because they're the quarterback and they would be the future of your team. You've also got Enrique Buckhalter here, uh, has really bad short accuracy, but everything else looks to be pretty solid. Uh, has a good spiral. Uh, not as good of an athlete as Eric Baldwin here, but he does have great to elite throw power, so that's a bit better. And as we saw, this guy could also throw on the move, but um, C play action, A deep, B medium, uh, A awareness, A stamina under pressure, trucking, B injury, C carrying. I think I like Baldwin more, but Buckhalter here is still a really, really good option. He's 6'3", he's a strong quarterback, also out of Ole Miss, what? How does that work? So is Clayton Alexander, are these guys all from Ole Miss? All from the same school? Maybe this is like a, like a Oklahoma kind of situation or a, a Alabama locker room thing where they're just listing their first college because all three of these guys went to Ole Miss and they're all different. Now, now we got 5'11", Clayton Alexander here, fuel general, Archetype, so they had three different archetypes of quarterback over there in Mississippi. Great to elite throw power, uh, great to elite chain of direction, but not the best athlete overall. He's got good accuracies across the board, but he really can't move outside the pocket. He's pretty good in play action, high injury rating, which is good, but cannot really extend plays. But I think I like the other two guys more. Then you've got Antonio Fuller here with B deep accuracy, B medium, A short, A under pressure, 6-4, scrambler archetype. This time he's out of Tennessee. Very good athlete, elite athlete, good to great throw power as well. This guy might be, be my favorite. Just fantastic across the board. C play action, D juke move, F injury. Feet carrying, but everything else besides that is near perfect. A awareness, a break sack, stamina, stiff arm, short accuracy, trucking, under pressure, throw on the run, B spin move. I think he's my top player in the draft over the other three quarterbacks. Obviously, I, I think it's him, then Baldwin, who is also just fantastic overall. Yeah, it's him, then Baldwin then Buckhalter, and then the receiver probably, or maybe the receiver and then Buckhalter, but those are your top quarterbacks. Is there anybody else in the first round? There is Jonathan Wells, around two to three talents. That's pretty much your only other option. He's six foot out of Stanford. Great to elite throw power. Uh, won't be moving outside of the pocket too much, but he's a good pocket QB if you want to go for that route. But I like the other first round options. I like Antonio Fuller a lot. So those are some of your top prospects there. I'm gonna just set up the immediate favorites with Fuller as the one, Ball one at the two, and then Caldwell behind them too. We'll look through more of those prospects next time, obviously. But those are the initial ideas and for Jordan Love what kind of contract is he even on so he's got two more years 2026 and 2027 so could easily be traded our roster is down to 47 people and here's what it looks like now obviously we lost a couple of players to free agency still have a decent receiving core I want to add to it Offensive line, 
maybe could use some slight adjustments, but the defensive line needs some work. Linebackers need some work for sure. Secondary needs work. But that's your team. We've got uh, all of our picks this year, and we have an extra couple from the Commanders in the fourth and seventh rounds. So good to have those. But might also be trading away Jordan Love here soon. Looking for a change of quarterback. So I am going to add Love to the trade block. I'm going to keep Hooker on the team as the backup. We're going to add Love to the trade block as for receiver. I think I want to keep Mike Williams around for at least one more year. See what he can uh, provide for us. Irv Smith, I definitely want to get rid of. I want to make Laporta the number one tight end for sure. So add Irv Smith there. Defensive line, I want to see what Decker is worth because I want to give... The other left tackle, Cobb, some playing time in the upcoming season. Also want to see what maybe John Runyon's worth to some different teams. We upgrade there and the open markets. The rest of the team, I think I want to keep the rest of the guys around for now. And just kind of add to our roster, not really take away from it, really. But that's the idea. Actually, one last guy, Kirby Joseph. He is an 80 overall. Maybe you don't trade him away. Think about keeping him. Maybe you give away Gardner Johnson and let Brian Branch take over. That could be an opportunity. Go a bit younger. We'll do that and see what pops out. In terms of the open market, though, who are the free agents? Well, you got Jalen Ramsey here to lead the class alongside Jalen Waddle, who is available. We might have to go after him. Add him to our scheme, which he is a scheme fit. He's got 14 other teams interested. We only have $48 million in cap room. Not a lot to work with, and he would be taking away about half of that room as well. But if you add him, you don't have to go receiver in the first round. Um, yeah, there is Jalen Phillips here. Akemo Kwanu. Charvarius Ward could add that to your secondary and prove it there. Travis Kelsey's a free agent, but is not interested anymore. Daniel Carlson, Tyron Matthew, Logan Cook, Jameson Williams, obviously. Martin Emerson, couple of kickers, Grady Jarrett, Darius Slay, Connor Williams. We sign him, move him to right guard. He's played there before. Marcus Lawrence is available. Plenty of options for sure. You also could bring in Jahan Dotson. That could be a much cheaper move to add a pretty good third receiver to your team. Not opposed to doing that. So definitely things to think about and ways to improve here with these available free agents. But that's going to be it for the episode, folks. The real series will start next episode as we will enter our first offseason and our first season with the Detroit Lions here in this 10-year rebuild series. That's going to do it. Please like and subscribe. Leave your comments down below and your thoughts on the series. And uh, we will pick things up to really kickstart it next time around. See you guys there. Peace out.